hands, sorry, and put our feet in the center of the mat. Come to stand. So working with floating Buddha, we're going to put the swing behind our back. We get into our sumo squat, squat first. Lift the arms, hug the swing. So this is our standing position. We always use our forearms and press the swing down all the way. Let the swing touch the bottom of the ribs. Once we're there, we're going to lean back. Woo! Good. A little trust, a little uh, relationship with trust that we're building. And then we slide our arms up. Okay? And if we're here and somebody really doesn't like that falling back feeling, they can hold on. Okay? So there's that. That's a variation. Diving with the arms, so we're creating that circuitry with the arms, slide into the front of the mat. Use the shape of the mat to inform the movement. So then we're heel toeing wide to 10 and 2 for our sumo. So our alignment here is hips are heavy, heart is open, and the head is relaxed, which means head is straight over the body. Beautiful. Now we're going to hug the swing. So this is our anchor point. If you hear me go, no, 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 that means you're about to lose a hook. Right? So people go like this to reach when we always want to hug. It is a little intense on the arms, so that's why most people, I think, lose their cup. But we always want to go, no, no, no. <laughs> They're not going to fall very far, but we don't want anybody to go for plunk. Right? So we're going to hold on to the leg loop. Let's start with the right one with both hands. Now we're just going to get the leg loop on. We're going to learn tomorrow how to get this on, and we're going to learn actually in 3D how to get it on with strength. But for now, we're just going to lift up the right foot and get that on at the ankle, straight leg. So one leg loop at the ankle, I call it a half Buddha. When we put both leg loops on, I call it floating Buddha. Okay? So left leg loop in our hands, hold on strongly, lift the leg, get that at the ankle, and then drop the hips again. When the leg loops are at the ankles, it is more challenging than when the leg loops are at the knee. So in some ways, this is a more challenging sequence. So we'll go into chillaxin in number four where we move the leg loops to our knees. But for now, in floating Buddha, we want to keep our hips heavy, our heart open, and our head relaxed. And you can see in this position, it would be more relaxed to use our chillaxin arms, right? So we don't move our hips. We just lift our heart towards the sky and let our head sink back into our knees. Beautiful. Now it's a bigger stretch through the legs. I like to add a little swagger, so we're going to gently rock from side to side. I like to use my windshield wipers, so I push one foot down and then the other foot down, and then I begin to sway. Beautiful, guys. We have plenty of room, but it's always good to make sure that your buddy's head is in a safe place for you to play, and they are in a good position. Yeah. So. Hips heavy, heart open, head relaxed. Just remember that's a cue for all of these poses. All right. So from here, from our floating Buddha, what I like to do is come into a pigeon pose. So we're going to come back to neutral. So whenever you need to, you can hop to adjust the swing, or you can lean back to adjust the swing. But then we're going to come into this position where the swing is behind the heart. If you see people doing this, which I call scarecrow, it like looks painful, as it is, then you want to ask them to hop and adjust and hook the wings, really strong engagement, or go ahead and just lean back and let it slide down and come back into it. I usually recommend that people wear layers as well, because if you have more clothes on, it feels a little bit better on the skin, and in time when you get used to it, then it doesn't matter as much, but a, um, a shirt makes a big difference. Okay, let's bend the right knee in. Let's do a floating pigeon. There's about 10 different pigeon poses in this practice. And uh, some are seated, some are standing, there are all kinds of pigeons. So we want to hold on to both the leg loop and our foot for this version. So same arm as leg, and then just pull the foot in towards your chest, right? And so the knee is going to be flaring out to the side. So we can pull the knee in and the foot in, that's a variation. Or we can pull the foot in and push the knee down, and that's a variation. So try all the different variations. Okay, holding on to the leg loop. There's a lot of um, uh, creative freedom <laughs> in this practice because there's not just one way. But this is my favorite pose. Just try this, Amy, where you push the knee down towards the ground. So it's a rotation, right? Instead of it just being a linear movement, we're actually spinning, right? And when we spin the hips, then we open up the piriformis. So this is a great stretch for things like the SI joint. Okay, great. Let's open it up. Just take a little break there. Oh, lean back. <laughs> and the left knee in. Let's try the second side. Floating pigeon. Holding 
holding onto the left foot with our right hand. So left hand can grab with the leg loop, pull the foot in towards the chest. Our hips are square in this position. Does that make sense? Drop the hips, they're square. Okay, then we can pull the knee in. It's kind of like rocking the baby. Kind of fun. Or we can push the knee down, but it's not straight down. We're kind of spinning and spiraling. And so the other hips, the left hip drops as the right hip lifts as we push the knee down so it's pointing towards the ground. Do you feel that stretch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we call it the money pose. <laughs> that stretch is money. There's like no other place where you can really get that deep into the iliac press. Okay, inhale, open it up, take a little break. Let's try both feet together. Okay, I call this swing bottom. So feet together, knees open wide. So you can make a diamond with your legs. You can even make a diamond with your arms and come back into chillaxing arms. Just make sure your hips are heavy, your heart is open, and your head is relaxed. If you push your hips up, you're going to slide back too far. So hips stay heavy in this version. Okay, great. Let's inhale, come back to opening it up. Let's go with the right knee bent. Let's revision, revisit our pigeon pose one more time. We're going to hold on with both hands, and I'm going to bicep curl and lift. Good. Let's do that one more time. Bicep curl and lift. Good. Now this time we're going to bicep curl, lift, press the right knee down, get the bottom of the foot on the inner thigh, and let your right hand fly. So you have to lift and get the bottom of the foot on the inner thigh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is called a side tree. <laughs> Ta -da. Or if you're feeling frisky, it's called a, a flying ninja. So it just depends on your personality. If you're feeling like a ninja, let yourself really fly, arch and open. If you're feeling like a side tree, be more grounded and, and chill. Okay, yeah, that looks great. Okay, cool. <sighs> Let's come on out. We unfurl, come on back to center, open it up. Bend the left knee in, coming back to our pigeon pose, hold up with both hands. Bicep curl lift. Let's do that a few times. Bicep curl lift, and as we lift, we can press our knee down towards the ground. Bottom of the foot is going to find the inner thigh. Keep holding on with your right hand and let your left hand fly. Now you're going to press your, your hips into the side plane. Yeah, so the knee is going to point down. And then you really let your arm extend right out of the shoulder joint if you can, Petra. Right out of the uh, left hand is right up. Ta -da! From fingertips to the toes, a nice big line of energy. There you go. That would be the ninja version. Okay, go ahead and release. Let's come back to our chillaxing arms, unfurl, winch away for a little bit from side to side. Maybe that felt a little intense in the underarms. So go ahead and hop or take a break and adjust. Frequent adjustments help, right? Because <laughs> you have to get used to it. This is a lot of time in the swing. Typically like an hour, hour and 15 minute class is long enough for a new person. And we're doing like six hours, right? Three hours and then you guys will have a break. So stick with it for the yoga translations and then we will do some fun things in the workshops. That will be a nice review. Okay, let's come on back to center one more time. Bend both knees in. Swing Bada. It's like Bada Kanasana, but in the air. Okay. Without so lifting the hips. Well, I like to keep the hips neutral. So yeah, the hips are going to be heavy in this pose even though they want to press up. I want you to press the knees out instead. Yeah, we're gonna lift the hips up next. But right now we're just opening up the inner thighs. It's kind of like a warm up left. Then we're gonna reach for our ankles. Slide up the leg loops. So most people will hold on to the swing. You have to give them those instructions. Hands on the knees, slide towards your ankles, and then reach for the leg loops as high as you can. Perfect, let's go into flying monkey. We're gonna lift the hips and lean back. Just let that feel good as you stretch. The neck, the front of the shoulders, now hips are up, head is back. Right? And then you can roll the shoulders around a little bit. So Flying Monkey is a world-class favorite. <laughs> Slowly drop the hips, release, come on back. Open it up one more time, shake it out. Shake, shake, shake. Let's try our chill flow. So I do two different flows. I do a vinyasa flow and then a chill flow. So when it's chill, we're just going to do half of it. When we do the vinyasa flow, we're going to go over it tomorrow. It's going to be the full sequence. So this is the first half. We're going to tee the arms. Take a nice big inhale. Exhale, just lean back into it for start. Just the heart. All right. And then we're going to inhale for namaste. Hands to prayer. Around the swing. Get the foot up the foot. Press the feet together. Lift the hips. Lean back. Oh, reverse it. Exhale, go ahead and sink the hips down and open. Really nice. Inhale, 
mountain. Exhale, star. Inhale, squeeze, namaste. Exhale, press and lift, reverse. Take a nice big inhale, and then exhale, drop it back down. Inhale, T, exhale, star. And inhale, namaste, exhale, press, and back. Take a nice big inhale in, exhale, come on back to sit. Ooh, let's add one more pose. This is called ladle pose, right? So from here, just watch for the first one. I'm gonna go through the whole sequence. I'm gonna reach up, grab for the swing, let it slide toward the waist. Ladle, most importantly, that you get it right across the iliac crest or it won't feel great on the kidneys. You can stay holding on. So a lot of the ladle poses I do, I have people hold on now because this is really scary. <laughs> Especially for a beginner class. But we're doing kind of like a back bend and an inversion at the same time. And the hands can come down. The palms are up. That means your fingernails are touching the ground. And then we squeeze the legs together the whole time. Really strong lines of energy. Most people are kind of floppy. Right? So it makes, let's, I call it ladle because it's kind of like you don't want to spill the gravy. <laughs> so make sure you're a nice strong ladle. Inhale, take the arms. Exhale, star. Inhale, namaste. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, reach up, grab for the swing. Exhale, lower for ladle. So hips are pressing up, feet are pressing down, legs are squeezing together. And then if you feel comfortable, arms can go wide and around. Wide and around. Palms up the whole time. Okay, we'll take a few deep breaths here. Feel the swing kind of hugging the hips. Let it feel good. Should feel good on the back. When you're ready, we're going to inhale, reach up, grab for the swing. Exhale, bicep curl, come to sit. Beautiful. So that's our half flow. So we'll learn the full vinyasa flow tomorrow when we do a whole round house flow. It's really fun. Have you guys done that before? Did you guys take any classes? Okay. Well, no. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It takes all the zest out of it if you know where it's going, but that's okay. We'll learn it tomorrow, the full flow. But that's all I would do in a basic class. In fact, in a really beginner class, I would just tee the arms. What we're doing is just undulating the spine. Open up for star and let them learn this little movement here where it's just the upper thoracic spine where we're initiating our back bend and then come into a namaste because this is as far as they are going to go. This is really strong, right? We're pressing up, really engaging through the hamstrings and glutes and strong with the forearms too and then lower back down. So ladle is something I would only do if they're a little bit more experienced. Well, most of the time people get scared, for one, because <laughs> we're not used to doing back flips, right? It's kind of like a back dive. And then for two, it's a very strong activation of the endocrine system. Not everybody's into it. Okay, so we just went over our side, side tree, floating pigeon, wide straddle, star now and stay, swing bottom flying monkey, straddle, splits. Okay, we're going to go over flying monkey one more time. This would be for those people who want dynamic strengthening. Not everybody wants dynamic strengthening, but if they did, we would go from our swing bada to our flying monkey. Remember, hold on to the leg loops, lean out, see? So we always slide towards our ankles first, reach straight out in front of you, then up the leg loops, press the hips up, lean back. Now keep holding on, even though I say keep holding on, people will let go. But keep holding on, lower the hips, open up the legs, and then from here, from our wide straddle, we can go ahead and do some bicep curls. See if you can do five. Wide legs. Yeah, bicep curls. Don't let go. <laughs> Everybody, let's go. That's why, like, I usually in the beginner class, like, no one really wants to remember our head stays in line with our tailbone and we lead with the heart. Heart lift. Yeah, heart lift. The other heart, right? Now keep holding on. I'm going to go ahead and thread my hands through and make an X. Can you make an X with the leg loops and then pull them towards you? Just one side. Yeah, I call it threading. Yeah, thread through and then pull. So make an X. We're not quite there yet. Oh, just one more time. Thread it over. Yeah, that one. Yes, there you go. Grab that one. There you go. Everybody's X. Now from X, it's kind of like flying monkey, but it's with straight legs. I call it the wow pose or inverted W. Right? So we're going to go from here. We're going to pull, lift, and see if we can arch back. Now, if you don't X, then it's just going to the leg loops are going to slip. So just try it. It might be like a whoa instead of a wow. <laughs> but see what it feels like to really have strong arms, lean back, pull on the leg loops. Oh, and then come 
the sit. Try it a couple times. Your feet and hips might go towards the sky, or you might just have a little pull and not go very far, which is fine. Again, we're just learning how to create that dynamic tension of the body moving in two opposite directions to create space. All right, go ahead and release. Shake it out, shake it out. All right, we're gonna um, go right into the half pivot unless you guys need a break. How are you, how are you? how's your upper back? You good? If you ever wanna just watch for a round, that's okay because we can repeat things. We're gonna keep our right leg loop on. Let's take the left leg loop off. So this is our half pivot. <sighs> so in our half pivot pose, I'm going to go through my quad stretches and my um, a version of Sukta Varasana from here. We can do it where we were and go back and check it out, but let's just try it from here. So, in our one-legged sequence, we are going to learn how to strengthen our core. So this is what I call a side lunge for obvious reasons, right? We just have one leg hooked and we can play with our side to side or our circles and all of that. I usually like to wag the tail so this foot can explore in the space. So many variations we can do from here. You know, really just pick your favorite one. You feel like, which one should I teach? And also look around. What does it look like people need? This is a great hamstring stretch, right? Now from here, if I wanted to come into a quad stretch, I would first do the half pigeon, right? Half Buddha, half pigeon. That makes sense, I could have straight leg or bent knee, depending on how I want to play. And then I'm going to keep holding on with my right hand. I'm going to let my knee bend in, and then I'm going to turn it over for a quad stretch. So I like to always hold on, right? Because this helps us to stabilize. So I'm holding on to the swing, and I'm holding on to the leg lift. Always hold on. Most people will let go, so try holding on. Walk your foot out so that it's about 9 o'clock on your mat. Okay, so we have to spread out. We can inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, kind of come out of it. Exhale, lower, keep holding on to the back. Inhale, lift. So the foot is not in the center of the mat at 9 o'clock. There you go. Hop along. <laughs> now, if I want to come into Ardha Sukta Varasana, I'm going to straighten the front leg. I'm going to pull my knee towards the center line. So make sure you're pulling it in. And then I can lean back. It's a really deep flat stretch. That obviously would be more advanced, right? <laughs> that wouldn't be for a beginning. But it's a nice way to start to stretch the quad in a very supportive fashion. Instead of on the floor, we're kind of floating. Come on back to center. We're going to turn it over. Oh, very good. Straighten it out. Always give the swing a little hop or lean back whenever you need to take a break. It feels good. The upper body kind of fluffs out from being squeezed so much. Okay, great. Let's move into core. So that was a side lunge. Now we're going to do our core strength. There are many, many core strengtheners in our practice. Tomorrow is all core and inversions and like dynamic movement. So trust me, you're more going to get there. Today we're going to do more of a beginner version. This is how I help people learn how to lift their leg. It's amazing how much trouble people have lifting their own body weight, right? So we're going to use our arms. Again, you're going to have to get used to this really strong hook under the arms. Straighten the arms out in front of you, and then see if you can pick the knee up. So we're just going to let the knee touch, and then lower back down. Take a nice big inhale here, and then exhale, squeeze. Pull the hands down towards your navel as you lift the knee up. So the arms are engaged in all these poses. So squeeze, exhale, inhale, lengthen. So pull down even more, Amy. Let there be yes. Squeeze, and then lengthen. Inhale here. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, lengthen. Every inhalation is a lengthen. Every exhale is a squeeze. All right, let's go ahead and put that foot down and just go sink back into our chillaxed arms and take a pause. So those were the easy ones. But that's how we teach people how to get the leg loops on. All right, let's just go ahead and sway from side to side. Take a little break. Now we're gonna do the more advanced ones. <laughs> And everybody has their own favorite variations. I like to hold on to the leg loop with my free hand. So I call it like a choo-choo if I do a wrist wrap. Right, so we get our choo-choo going. Then I'm going to pick up the knee, and I'm going to let it point towards the sky. I'm going to press my hips up, right? Whenever we press our hips up, we're engaging the whole back of the leg. I'm going to use my right hand supporting my head, and then I'm going to bring 
knee to elbow. And then I'm going to inhale, expand, and then I'm going to exhale, squeeze. Good. Inhale, expand, exhale, squeeze. Try to stay level with the earth, so really push the hips up. Bring the knee to elbow instead of the elbow to knee, if that makes sense. Inhale, expand, exhale, squeeze. All right, so stay up, so knee points towards the sky, straighten the leg. Now I'm going to toe touch. Let's just do a couple. So I call these plank toe touches. So I inhale, expand, plank. Exhale, toe touch. Really stay in a straight line. Plank, toe touch. Plank, toe touch. Okay, I had to hook the heel. So we'll work on all the alignment for those later, <laughs> which there, there is plentiful. So the foot hooks the swing all the way up. Yeah, well, that's fine, she Okay. As long as you know where it's going to be. I just don't have the strength. And... Well, you can hook your foot, though. So bring your foot oh. all the way up the hook. The swing, other side, inside. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. This yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. The one that seems really far. <laughs> there you go. Now drop your butt. Drop your butt. So this is our hook. This is kind of our relaxation pose. You can always support the head if you need. But if you drop the hips, then your head kind of gets back in line with your body. You can always support. Okay. So then the last one is a bigger twist. So I'm going to let my foot be between the leg loops and the swing. I'm going to extend in all directions, kind of like I'm making an L with my legs. And then I'm going to hold on to wherever I can reach. Maybe it's the toes, on the edge of the foot, ankle, back of the knee. But I'm going to do a big twist here. Like this. Long lines of energy. It's kind of more of the Pilates version. Let's go ahead and bring that foot back through neutral. Put the leg loop line. You're like, oh my god. I know. They do increase the difficulty as we go. So, all right, back to windshield wipers. Let's go ahead and sway from side to side and integrate. So we have two legs. We're going to have to do that all again. So all you have to think is side lunge and core in the half Buddhas, if that's too confusing. But if you remember the quad stretch, Supta Marasana, and then getting into hooks and twists, that's also really nice. I use the half Buddha for the lunges and the core. All right, when you're ready, come on back to center. We're going to release the right foot. At first, we're going to come into like a half sumo. In the half sumo pose, I'm going to just wag the tail. So I let my foot explore in space. Sometimes I think it's good to push the hips out and then pull them back in. So I'm working in the side plane. And then sometimes semicircles feel good. So as long as this knee feels safe, you never let the knee go over the ankle. So that's one important factor there. The knee feels safe. Good. For my quad stretch, I start by doing a half pigeon. Okay, so like a half pigeon pose. So I always stretch one direction and then the other. So I keep holding on, I turn the knee in, I turn it over. I heel toe my foot to its three o'clock position on the mat. So three o'clock on the mat. Keep holding on. Remember to go back, because you don't want to lose your hook, right? So come on back to the pigeon. Good. So stay here, so we're acting nice and tight towards the center line, so nothing gets too uh, loosey-goosey. You don't want to injure the joint. So we turn the knee in. Oh, yeah. still holding on. Yeah, still so holding on. These are our stabilizers, right? If we don't hold on, then it doesn't feel stable. Did you okay. notice that? Yeah, you're like, it didn't feel stable. We got all this play. Okay. And so this is one great way to hold on and lift and then lower. So I do those little bicep curls and all the poses, plus you get really good arm strength just by lifting and lowering. Feels great. Pull that foot in nice and tight. That foot will nice tight to drop the hips. So there's a little tightness in there. That we're doing. So the other option is to hook the elbow. If you want to get that foot even closer to the bum, hook the elbow. So we either lift, so that's one option, or we hook. Really good. All right, straighten the front leg. This is a great stretch as it is. We don't even have to go much further. Pull the foot in close to your butt. Okay, great. And then we can lean back for our Supta Marasana, but make sure your knees are pulling towards the center line, right? Your knees are pulling towards one another so they don't flare out wide. Yeah, that's how we keep alignment. And then you can lean back, lift the heart, keep the head neutral. You can even support the head if that feels like a good option. We'll support the head in all the poses. Beautiful, guys. Come on back to center. Roll it over nice and easy. Ooh, la la. Hello, quads. 
So you stay seated the whole time if you can. So we let the swing support us in all the poses. So we walk back out to a half sumo and wag the tail, maybe come back into a supported back bend. Let the swing slide down nice and low. <laughs> you will get used to it, but at first the upper body is like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> and then we're gonna come to neutral, back to our half sumo. Let's hold on to the leg lift with both hands. So we first point our knee down, this is our core activation. So you can just touch, right? Some people who don't like to pick up their leg, they'll flop down in between. Not an issue, but we are going to pick it back up, so we might as well flip. Okay, straight arms, really engage. Pull the leg loop down towards your navel as you lift your knee up, squeeze. Inhale, expand. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, expand. Exhale, squeeze. Good, one more. Inhale, expand. Exhale, squeeze, pull down even more. Really pull down, so use those upper muscles. And then we're just gonna come to a pause and take a break. Now only do one of these. Don't do all three, because everyone will be looking at you like you're a nut, and you're, you're a little nutty. Okay, so whenever you need a break, come back into your chillaxing arms and hang up here. When you're ready to go into knee to elbows for the core activation, I like to use a wrist wrap. I call it my little choo-choo, it helps me stabilize. I'm going to pick my knee up towards the sky. I'm going to press my butt up. This is important. This is how we engage through the back of the leg. Support the head with your left hand. Keep your knee rising towards the sky and then bring the elbow to the knee. Inhale, expand. Arch left. Exhale, squeeze. That's it. Beautiful. Don't yank on the head. Keep the head in line with the tailbone, right? Just pull the knee towards your elbow instead of the elbow towards the knee. And then add that little twist in there. Inhale, expand. Exhale, Squeeze. There you go. Push your hips up. Press them up. Press them up. Yeah. Squeeze. Hips stay pressed the whole time. Inhale. Expand. Exhale. Squeeze. Good. And then extend the leg towards the sky. Touch the toes. So now plank toe touches. So plank. Expand. Exhale. Squeeze. Inhale. Plank. Exhale. Toe touch. Push the hips up the whole time. It's really strong for the back of the leg. Until you get nice butts. Inhale. <laughs> I know you're like, this is not a beginner class. Well, that's how we're going to for you. Okay, and then hook all the way up, all the way up. Cool. Go ahead and support both hands with your head if you want to kind of use this as a chill pose. It's like, oh my god, we made it. Very few people love core exercises. I particularly like them, but not everybody does. So drop your butt and just let the body relax in between. So the hook. Does so everybody notice that this is an incredible stretch for the IT band? Right? So the, where the IT band meets the hamstring, it's really tight. You can also bend the knee out and come into a version of pigeon here, which is crazy good for that whole hamstring IT band connection. So there's lots of different variations that we can do here. Just see what feels good. Thanks. Some people, this is easy. Other people, you can just, they're like all the way up here. You know? So slide on down, Amy. Just try it. There you go. <laughs> Even if you bend the knee a little bit, it's okay. Because we're not trying to get out of the pose as much as just sink into it. But we're going to do another variation that's easier when we get into chillaxing. Last pose. Why don't we go ahead and hold on to the swing and twist? Maybe that will help you push your hips up. <laughs> okay. So make an L shape with your legs. Don't go past neutral. So keep your head in line with your body, and then your foot doesn't drop past your hip. Beautiful. Reach for the outer edge of the foot. Back of the knee, ankle wherever you can reach, and twist. So all of the twists ring out the spine. Oh, coming back to center. Land it. And let's take a little break. Let's take a break. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. It's like, this is too long. <laughs> Let your back breathe. Let's pause. <laughs> so that was all of three. That was all